And here we go again, one more time. All the technical things seem to line up more or less. This is Legends of the Drowned Dials, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. I'm your host and the GM, and largely responsible for when things go wrong. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, but I have before me my wonderful players. Folks, introduce yourselves, starting on my left, which would be the other hand in the video. But uh, My name is Pat. I'm playing uh, Silas Marsh, uh, Illusionist. Oh, no, we lost three. <laughs> <laughs> We're using some borrowed internet at the moment. Yeah. It seems like problems might arise. Yeah. Well, then In the then... meantime, I'm Max, and I'm playing Medrek, Half-Orc Cleric. All right, and we'll see if we can recover and reconnect with our erstwhile player here in a moment. Lag. Oh, it's the the nature of everything. Uh, technical issues are, I think, de rigueur. They're sort of a, a requirement, I think, at this point. In any case, hopefully, technical and issues. And she's playing a nuisance. <laughs> I suppose we. I think do we have we have two out of three cats. I think that are available uh, on this, uh, on this uh, call. I don't know if. The third one will be showing up. <laughs> Everybody's going to just <laughs> be replaced by their cats for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Maybe we'll all have cat cams at some point. We can just yeah. press a button and uh, show cat. Well, in the meantime, uh, Annie won't be getting the uh, the recap, but hopefully she'll be able to reconnect in a second. I'm not. <laughs> their internet cut out, so we'll see. If she's not back in a few minutes, we might have to postpone. In the meantime, though, a recap of what happened in the previous episode. As heavy rain and wind blotted out the last remaining lights of the day, a bright light appeared on the horizon. Oxia and her army of sea devils began their attack on Ailsfader. The town guards had been alerted, as had the citizens, so precautions had been taken. Out to sea, the errant widows struggled to stay afloat as the, in the churning waves of Silver Moon Bay. Most directly, Oxia rode aloft a giant turtle straight toward the docks. Hovering over the, her hand was the bundle of living shadow Silas had seen before, again barely containing the sunstone's power. With it, she swept beams of brilliant power across the seawall and over several buildings in the town, scorching them and setting some of them on fire. With there were a few sea devils, sea devil warriors, and a pair of frightening, monstrous humanoid creatures with large, curved pincer claws and displaying dozens of writhing tentacles below their bulbous eyes. The skin was hard and chitinous, and once they got a grip on someone, they quickly dismantled them. The group moved forward to the dock to bring support to the few guards who remained. At first, Oxia seemed to believe that the alliance with Zagwatha negotiated through Silas had stood, but after being attacked by the group and Silas loudly denying it, the battle was on. The guards fought well, one in particular stalling the progress of a crab-like monster significantly on his own, until finally his luck ran out and he too succumbed to the mighty beast. The turtle continued slowly moving forward implacably, delayed briefly by an illusion of fire projected by Silas. The group took the fight to Oxia, until she was forced to retrieve her living shadow as a protecting cloak, releasing the now dim star stone into the water as she retreated. The battle here was over, but the storm clouds still threatened, and two other fronts had been seen. To the northwest, the larger four-armed sea devil Silas had seen with Oxia had led a group around the seawall to that edge. The group noted Gaetano was sprinting down in the docks in that direction. At the other end of town, Across the other end of the seawall, two large silver-blue mounds of water moved swiftly across the land, with smaller, darker shadows following it. The group directed Captain Verendel to send his guards to meet that threat. The battle has just ended, and that one brave soul, who stood for so long, fell into the water. And we welcome back Marie. Marie, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? If you're not muted. <laughs> if my thing will let me unmute me. Uh, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. We thought that the physical connection would work. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm Marie. I am playing Annie, who is a rogue and who is going to uh, run towards the guy who was yeeted into the water. All right. I've got to get the right one. So many windows. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still here. It, oh, okay. Well, we'll bring up the map here briefly just to see where things lie. And I need to look at the map myself down by the docks. Uh, so you are going to head over to the one who's down in floating in the water face down. Uh, I don't know if we yep, actually I'll... gave him a name. I think we talked about it, but we didn't actually name him. All right. Well, we'll decide on a name if he survives. <laughs> Not to be too ominous about it. <laughs> okay. And he easily sprint over there. There are no remaining sea devils that are attacking, so... Uh, and the other larger chitinous creatures have also dispatched. Uh, there actually is a sea devil on the map. We never got rid of him. Didn't he just, like, run away? <laughs> sure he did. If not, then he should. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, oh, I don't have... I'm looking at the wrong screen trying to grab things. That's not going to work. Yes, he will, he will have run away with the other. This guy actually was dead. So I'll mark him as such. Uh, and so was... Uh, do the guards make death saves like PCs would? Uh, generally, you... Well, mechanically, you're not really sure. Um, or rather, in-game, in you're not really sure. Such a thing is kind of a, a weird convention for P, for uh, PCs. But if you check, you might find out. Granted, two right. of the guards were torn a shred to shreds, so... I don't think... This one was kind of flung, this so... This one was kind of flung in the end, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to try to stabilize him, if I could. Silas will go over and help. Okay. Nedrick will, too. Keeping in mind that he fell into the water, which is a, is a several feet deep at this at this particular spot. Yep. I'm going to at least, like, grab him up and make sure his head is out of the water. Okay. Yeah, we could pull him to the, to the, the area that was less water, too. You yeah. can drag him over, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a little waterlogged and kind of heavy. Uh, nothing, in, no mm -hmm. appearance of 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 life at the moment, but it's hard to tell when you're dragging someone out of the water. Um, I'll look at the one uh, on the dock next to the sea devil. Has he been dead for too long for me to attempt healing him? He's in a couple of different pieces. Okay. So yes. So, <laughs> so unless you have some major healing magic, it's unlikely that you can do much for him. But uh, Annie, you start to drag this this fellow back to the uh, to the shore. What do you do? Yep. What, what are you up to, Silas? Are you kind of helping out with this, or? Yeah, that's why I said I'm helping her. Okay. Um, you drag him up onto the shore, and no apparent signs of life, but this point i would like to try to stabilize him if i can okay that will be a medicine roll uh with silas helping does that give me advantage is silas trained in medicine no then unfortunately there's then not no. much you can really do uh well that is a 11 an 11 um yeah He's got large gashes across his front where the major blow hit. He's taken in some water. You turn him on his side and start to, uh, to, to drain the water out of his mouth. He's not really showing much signs of life at the moment, but Ignore that. he's not. You feel for a pulse, and you're pretty sure there's a little bit of heat left in his skin. There may be a faint pulse, but it's also very difficult to tell with the water still rushing in and flowing, and the loud overhead crashes of thunder and lightning, which have not ceased, and the heavy patter of rain all around you. Well, I'll walk up to the guy and cast uh, level one cure wounds. Okay. Roll the healing. Hey! Holy crap. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh... Yeah, 
wonder if I even have his sheet up. There we go. Um, how does it look? What is the, the approach? What, how do you... Because uh, 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 um, Cure Wounds is a touch spell. So what does that look like? Describe the scene for me. I'll walk up to him, kneel next to his well, unmoving body, and put my hands near where the biggest gashes are. And then fire is going to like slowly appear from my hands and then get more intense. And then it's like... But it doesn't like hurt him. It hurts me actually. I'm gonna roll for that for that after. But then the wounds are just gonna seal up, and his clothing and armor next to the wounds are just gonna be like sizzling a little bit, like sizzling a little bit. Okay, uh, Annie, you're kind of holding on uh, to him, holding him uh, upright, getting the water at least to flow out of his lungs, trying to pat him on the back. And Medra comes to you. The dim clouds behind him seem to backlight this, uh, or, or, or backshadow, if you will, this nimbus of flames that you see licking up around his form. Um, you look up and see him kneeling down towards the figure, and it is almost as though, kind of like the, the sun peering just around the edge of a cloud, there's a glow that comes from his hands, but also from his very skin and being. You see the symbol of Ignis on his, uh, on his. Uh, you have one on your chest, I think, as well, on your armor. Uh, start yep. to glow ever so slightly, and flames lick out, out over the body in front of you. The flames uh, are, are warm, and you feel yourself having to pull back just a little bit, but they carefully move around you, and there's a bit of steam that rises off the body. Then... With a choking, coughing fit, the guard comes back to life, pushes out the rest of the, the water in his lungs, and coughs. I like tap his back. Yeah, it sounds hollow, and he winces a little bit because he's still somewhat wounded. Uh, and the wounds, while mostly sealed, uh, have, uh, have uh, just uh, uh, the, the, the residue, if you will, of scars that are happening. Uh, but he's, his eyes open wide and he tenses in your hands, Annie. What's that? What? The, what? I'll pat him on the back. Good job back there, man. And he kind of turns and looks at you, and his eyes just sort of go very brightly wide as he looks up at you, glowing from above him. The glow passes in a second or so, but you get the impression that the, the, uh, the impression of it will last a lot longer in his eyes. Uh, and he starts to struggle to sit up uh, with you, and he's still right next to him. Uh, and he kind of looks wide-eyed between the two of you. Uh, ow. Did, did we win? For now. Uh, Hopefully. And the fight's over. Oh, good. I could really use a rest. You should probably go get some help. Silas is going to look around to see if the fight actually is over because there were two two other groups that from where you are you can't really see much uh, because of the, the thick uh, rain that's pouring overhead um, mm. if you glance to this to the sort of southeast along the lower edge of the seawall all you see is the water rushing in as the tide is rising uh, to its almost to its apex at this point um, Actually, not quite to its apex, because you're in the, 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 the shallow part. Um, you can see nothing there. It looks just like a normal water tide moving in, except, of course, the, the rushing winds that are supporting the tide and frothing up the water a little bit. As you glance to the northwest, you can just make out a, a, a sort of reddish glow beyond the seawall. Uh, probably a fire, although the rain should put that out at some point. It's hard to tell from where you are. It's still quite a distance away. You don't see any other guards on the deck. Um, I don't remember if any other survived. I think one of them did, if I recall correctly. Uh, I Actually, think that the... Survived. Yeah, the two that were closest here. <clears throat> yeah, they're rushing over, actually, to see how their friend is doing. Uh, having seen you kind of do this this thing... Um, one of them looks remarkably like a twin. That's what happens when you clone an icon. <laughs> but he's not. Uh, 
He's right-handed as opposed to left. There you go. That's the entire difference between the two of them. Uh, but they uh, they kind of quickly come over. Hey, you're not dead. And the guard who's sitting, who really needs a name. What is his name? Gordon. I don't know. Gordon the guard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We kind of have a thing with with names. We have Rascal the Raccoon, Brenda the Bear, Gordon the sure. Guard. Gordon the Guard. Uh, Gordon uh, uh, sits up and smiles a little weakly. Graveler the the Glomkin. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. Why do I ask you guys for names? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, one of the guards there is calling to to Gordon, uh, who sits up. I feel like I was run over by uh, a ship. And the other one kind of says, "Well, the, the ship was smaller." Um, we should check in, and Gordon kind of nods and unsteadily but indeterminately steps steps upward. I will take the X off of his face. I can. And in the back of his mind, um, Madrick is thinking, I hope this display of good magic makes its way back to uh, crotchety old guy, Verendel's friend or colleague. I forget his name. Right. Mm -hmm. Starts with a B. Raymond? Yeah, yeah, that guy. I can't. Just so he knows that not all magic is bad. I have to, I have to move him and take the X off his face. He's still got blood on his face. He can't move on his own. Uh, there, changed his name. Uh, Jordan. He he steps unsteadily to his feet. Yeah, I guess we should check in. Although, I really just want to go for a sleep. Uh, That's fair. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, and the, the three guards uh, will. Uh, well, the two other guards kind of pick Gordon up. A little bit of extra support. We'll take him from here. Uh, hey, thanks for helping out. I thought he was a goner. I'm pretty sure I was. No problem. Probably. And uh, one of them, actually, Gordon looks over his shoulder as the three of them kind of start walking back up the deck. <sighs> hey, um, thanks out there. I don't know what we would have done without you. Probably wouldn't have survived that long. Hey, I was doing fine on my own. They begin you really to... were. For the majority See, of it. What she says. My name's Gordon, by the way. Nice meeting you all. Well met, Gordon. Well met. Hopefully we'll meet again. Definitely. In, In better years. circumstances. Can't yeah, stop the three bells for a drink. <laughs> he, uh, the three of them uh, are heading back up the, the pathway to report in, presumably. After a few steps, although he was uncertain, probably because he was also soaking wet and it's very, very cold and a little bit traumatic to have what happened, what happened to him, Gordon does straighten up and start to walk a little more comfortably uh, on his own. Leaving the, the three of you down by the docks, the raging storm still overhead, still obscuring what's left of the sun for the day. You can smell smoke in the roiling wind. Henny, how how capable is your friend? Do we need to go help him, or should we go after the elementals? Um, we probably he went alone, right? I I didn't see him go anywhere. I rolled very uh, it was bad. Him and there might have been a couple of guards. I forget. I, I, and the the other way, had anybody gone that way? There were. I think there were guards that were assigned to it. Yeah, when you guys were. We don't know what. We don't know what Gaetano is dealing with. Um, he he should be capable, but if he was alone, I don't know what he'll be able to do. Medrick is just thinking about the sunstone or 
Is that what it was called? The Sunstone? Starstone, Sunstone. Just, yeah. Various terms. It's now in the water somewhere, not far from the dock. Yeah. But we saw where it fell, right? Approximately. Okay. I mean, the waters are churning. Everything's moving under under the under the water. Uh, Silas, you've lived here for a while. Uh, when the tide is out, do you think the sunstone will will, will be exposed? You're muted, you're I think, Pat. Sorry about that. Uh, do I? Um, I mean, you saw approximately where it fell. The water does bring in a lot of driftwood and constantly scours the rocks along the, the dockway. The landscape changes every time there's a high tide. In this kind of churning uh, weather, I mean, it could drag it back out to sea. Sure. Um, you might want to have uh, your elemental friend uh, go down and bring it up for us. Uh, if he's still here. I don't know how long he stays for. I don't know. Let me look at the thing. That could be something we could try. Would it damage him, though? I don't know. Oh, I don't actually have that in front of me. I thought I did. Sorry about that. Value and information. It doesn't say how long you last. Uh, I, it doesn't actually. Um. as if the so it's one hour it's as if the conjure elemental spell okay he's around okay. quite a while unless he's, he's yeah. destroyed i mean he's probably, uh -oh. he's probably going to be more resistant to it than any of us would be and he doesn't need to breathe i mean if he you know he swims in rocks he, surely he can swim in water and he's well, i don't imagine he can swim at all uh but yeah. he just go down to the bottom and then he'd have to walk out but um... the zorn can pinpoint by scent the location of precious metals and stones such as coins and gems within 60 feet of it does a sunstone count as precious metal i'm, I'm assuming it would you don't know you don't, precious you don't always stone. ask him hey graveler can you sense that rock that was on the turtle and he kind of, he kind of uh, stomps over to the rest of you. He's only about four feet tall. He's actually a little shorter, but he's very, very stocky. He's built a, a little bit thicker than a dwarf and made of pure stone. Uh, nice. And he kind of looks up at you, and you hear the sound of rocks shifting over each other. Probably said something. Um, but uh, as you explain what you're looking for, uh, make a, uh, let's see. I don't have a character sheet in front of me. This was a big mistake. I mean, just all the character <laughs> sheets. So I, I have all the stuff I need here. Uh, it's funny. I, if all the things that I've, I've needed to reference, I keep forgetting to bring up a character sheet. There we go. Do, 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 do. I'm going to call this a... Why are things not instant? It's the internet. Anyway, uh, let's right. call this... A hmm. how about a, 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 an insight check actually to be able to describe things intuitively for him to understand? So I'm doing the insight check, or is uh, Graveler doing whoever's the insight going check? to uh, whoever's going to whoever's going to to talk to Graveler? That's what you're going to need to describe to him because he, he's not that smart. Sorry, Graveler. I didn't mean to throw you in the like that. <laughs> he didn't understand. It's fine. <laughs> he's, he's not that smart. All right. I'll try that. And I'll use... Um, I'll grab a rock, like, from the shore and pick it up and cast light on it to, like, 
refer to what I'm looking for. Okay, I'll have you make that with advantage then. Oh, look hey. at that! Doesn't matter. You rolled. You rolled double twenty. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, Graveler looks at the oh. at at you and at the rock, and uh, totally sort of nods, but he doesn't have a neck, so his whole whole body kind of tips forward in this uh, in this subservient thing, and he runs inward towards the the uh, up the dock away from the water. And you're thinking something's not right until he dives into the shallowest of the water and immediately emerges with the the the, the seashore below, nice. and is out of sight instantly. You're not sure how long it's going to take him, but he's on the move. Are you going to wait around Good. until he finds it, or what? Uh, I probably should, and if I don't, then one of the guards should. <laughs> The guards are gone. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I'll wait until he comes back. Okay. And I mean, he, he seemed to, like, grasp the picture. He knows what I'm looking for. How long could it possibly take? Who knows? Who knows? Well, <laughs> Silas is going to start heading towards the place where the two water elementals had gone uh, see if we can find out what's going on there okay why and if possible if it's on the way can one of you guys check to make sure the temple of ignis is still standing they're in opposite yeah. directions damn it all right i'll check that afterwards so we'll go and also uh ask if dude can uh, the one who made the blacksmith, if he can make another something to contain the light. So just to give you yeah. a, a rough idea um, of the map. Okay, uh, so you had been um, centrally in that central area. That's where you guys had been fighting. You had roughly seen uh, the others down on this direction. Given in mind that the, the shore doesn't run east-west, it actually runs sort of uh, north-east uh, to southwest, essentially, but uh, oriented towards the, the town, that's what you're looking at. Um, that was in this direction, and at the very other end is where you saw some indication of the water elementals. So, you can go separately, or you can choose to go together. Um. After the fight you just had, however, you may not want to move separately. No. Yeah, I don't think that that is a good idea. Um. So you said Gaetano had gone alone or with people? Gaetano was running alone. There were other guards down by the docks, and there are other guards distributed around the uh, town itself. When you spoke to Captain okay. Verandell about what was happening, she seemed to send, or he seemed to send most of the guards uh, down towards where the water elements, elementals were, but Verandell seemed to go in the other direction. Okay. Um, I personally think we should go with uh, where Gaetano was going. Um... They have numbers on one side where they don't on the other. Uh, what about Graveler when he returns with the dangerous Aristotle? Yep. Uh, I, I mean, don't let not... if people. People are going to see a monster and they might try to attack him. Especially if he's carrying uh, something that was just used to attack the town. We can we wait could... here for a little while, but I don't like that idea very much. We could at least recruit some guards, find some people somewhere to let him know what's about to happen. There's going to be a monster. It's a good monster. Coming back from the sea with a bright stone that can 
seriously harm people. I mean, I, I don't yeah. think that'll help the situation right now. Um, I think we should wait a moment here and then follow Gaetano's direction. All right. Come on, Graveler, you got this. You understood the oh. instruction for the team. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, Silas had already headed off. Uh, okay, so you're heading along the dock. He does think that you guys should at least wait a bit for the thing to come back, but uh, he's not going off to fight. He's just going off to see if he can see what's going on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> which direction? That's a good idea. Which direction are you heading? Are you going to go along the dock, or are you going to go back up the dockway to the town? Um, Gitano was running along the dock. You're not really sure if that's. Yeah, but I'm not going to Gitano. I'm going to the water uh, elementals. Okay. Then are you going kind of down along the? Uh... Whatever way seems most direct to him, uh, knowing the docks. Um, yeah, okay. Um, if you follow along the docks, uh, it will, it stays along the shoreline and moves further and further away from the town. Uh, if you go inward, then you have quite a bit of trek before you get back beyond the seawall into the town. So it's kind of a toss up. It's more, if he goes all the way to the end of the docks and has to walk back into town, it is rocky shore that's mostly covered in water at the moment. Uh, down by the, uh, uh, the, if you will, the right side of this map. So we'd have to traverse water if he needs to go from the docks to town. Mm -hmm. Then he'll go into town. Okay. So we're taking the, tr the trip back up that way. Uh, I'm just going to check something here. Yeah, so it's a couple of thousand feet back to get back to town. So it'll take you a little while to start off in that direction. Um, as you're heading back that way, um, aside from the water itself churning up against the sides of the dock, nothing in particular seems to be out of place um, along that way. The seawall itself is still hiding a lot of the town, but you do see a vague glow off to, the, off to your left. Mostly, though, you're looking off to your right, and there's not much you can really see there. Uh, that part of the town seems to be dark. Um, you do know that a lot of people were buttoned up against the storm, uh, so there wouldn't be a lot of light coming out of houses at this particular point, and certainly the storm is convincing most people they shouldn't be on the streets anyway, aside from guards, um, who you do see a couple of uh, guards kind of riding on horseback uh, across town. Uh, they cross over the main the main uh, drag in front of you, uh, heading f to your right, so heading in that same direction of the town. Uh, after about a minute... Um, you see a uh, graveler kind of emerge from the dirt, uh, again, kind of where he jumped in as well, uh, where, so he's not in the, in the water for too, too long. Uh, he seems to be holding on to a couple of different things, weirdly enough. Uh, he's got, uh, his, uh, big, uh, fists, all three fists actually, uh, kind of grappling around a few things. And he comes and kind of presents them to Medric, to your feet, kind of dropping them like a dog who's, who's gathered a, a ball. Um, one of them is a pearl necklace. It's broken, uh, but it does seem to have most of the pearl still there. Uh, another is a small silver ring. Uh, presumably somebody dropped it off the side of the dock. And the third is a rock, a kind of dark black, uh, very jagged rock. But in it, you in particular, this close Medric, can sense the essence of the star stone. No longer glowing. In fact, not really giving off any light at all. I'm just going to, like, stare at it. One, in awe, and, like, two, what happened? But that's a problem we can figure out later. Um, I will take my cloak off and wrap it around the thing if Medric mentions that it's that. I would imagine, I don't know I'll if you're it mentioning it, but uh, <laughs> you can see what, what the thing brought back. Yeah. Well, Med mentions that the this black stone is the star stone. No, oh, I'll definitely mention it. 
Uh, so I'm yeah, I'll wrap start, that up. So that if it does light up, it's contained at least yeah. in that. Do you Good idea. Up? Not attached to the cloak anyway. Do you pick up the stone? I, I cover oh, I, it up. I'm assuming I would grab it first just to like okay. look at it, I guess. Its texture is smooth and almost glass-like. It has a very shiny surface. And as you pick it up, you can sense a little bit of heat coming from it. Um, and do you feel the, 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 the heat of Ignis, uh, even though it is very much diminished? Inside here still is the, the, the essence of the Star Stone. But the outside seems to be depleted. And it kind of rushes up, wraps her cloak around it. And you see uh, Silas retreating off into the distance. That was uh, I would then start to follow Silas. <laughs> okay, I heard that uh, Annie's going after Silas. What about Medric? It's just like, that was like Ignis speaking directly to me while I was holding the stone. But yeah, wrapping it up is definitely a good idea, and it's unfortunate that it's dimmed, but for our purposes right now, it's kind of uh, useful. So yeah, let's keep this really safe. We can bring it to Flamekeeper uh, Tidewell later. Uh, who wants to carry the ring and the necklace? I can grab those. All right. Okay. From a practice die, you see the... The, the, the necklace probably was pretty spectacular when it was full. Now it's mostly just the, the pearls themselves that are still on it. Uh, there's a, a thin chain that runs through it as well. Um, it could be repaired, but it, it would have to also be added to. Um, you'll have to find if a, of a broker. Or if you want to sell it, you could, you could find someone who manufactures them maybe. You probably couldn't sell it as much at the moment. The ring looks simple. It has a simple pattern on the top of it. Uh, it looks like a uh, a uh, uh, a tree, actually, a simple tree pattern stamped into the top of it. It looks in relatively good shape, but it's also nothing terribly fancy. Both of you take off after Silas. Yep. Yeah, but not before I give like Graveler a good handshake and a pat on the back, and it's like, good job, man. He grabs your hand. Oh, so that's more shit to kill. He grabs your hand with two hands and kind of su seems surprised at it. And as you pat him on the back, he uses his third hand to pat you on the head, thinking it's some sort of <laughs> ritual. This is things people do. Make a constitution <laughs> safe against concussion. <laughs> <laughs> He's not quite that clumsy, although. Yeah. Uh, and you take off after Silas. Yeah. Running, it's not hard to catch up to Silas before he's uh, three quarters of the way back to this, the town. Um, let me just put you all right there. As you get to the seawall, the water itself has kind of followed you the, the, this entire way, um, meaning that the all of the stuff that's normally open and exposed when, at low tide is now full up with water, and the water itself is, is about halfway up the seawall. So it's a good 5 to 10 feet deep, somewhere in between there. Uh, with probably still, as you know, Silas still has some distance to actually go at full, uh, but it came in very, very rapidly. Normally the tide doesn't shift quite so fast, but it probably has something to do with the massive storm that's behind you. As you crest the seawall, uh, it's eerily silent. There doesn't seem to be any sign of anything going on in either direction right where you are. Uh, I'm not going to have the guard right be right there, but uh, the... Nobody's on the main stretch. Now, it's dark, and if it was actually night, this wouldn't be too surprising. There are a few people that are out at night, and the guards do some patrols. Uh, occasionally, there would be drunken revelers who are making their way back to ships if this was actually night. But all of you know that this is actually fairly close to just mid-afternoon, and it's only because of the artificial cover of the, of the clouds overhead that it actually is as dim as night. Also, the storm has not relented. But because of the forewarning and because of what's going on, nobody is around. Not a soul. Small amount of mist fills in as well. I should say not mist, but fog. Rolling in off of the sea. Giving the entire area that sort of blanketed feeling. A warm red glow seems to come from the, uh, from your perspective, the left side of town. 
And from your perspective, Med Medric, the center of that warm glow would be the Temple of Ignis, which does actually have a very large flame at the top, so... Yeah. Uh, Silas is turning... Is it a normal right. warm glow, or is it a Temple's on Fire warm glow? And unfortunately, because of the, 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 the rain that's happening and the, the disruption in all the vision, it's just a faint glow. You can't really tell anything more. Okay. There's also many, many buildings between here and there. All right. Silas? Uh, he's... The, um, I understand if you want to check out the temple, but I get a check on those guards. I don't think they're prepared for anything like this. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. So, so he's going to run off. And Silas will be running because he has... My actual dark vision, so. Uh, yeah, I'd be keeping up with, with Silas. It's it's difficult. It is extraordinarily dark. Um, basically, for those who don't have dark vision, uh, you are having a hard time seeing. Yeah. Um, Medric, you glow. Put a rock from the ground and cast light. <laughs> I can keep pace with Silas really easy. That's true. You are pretty I'm fast. I am waiting for Graveler, too, so I'm running a little slower. I don't want to leave him by himself. All right. I don't know if I have Graveler on this particular map, but... Um... Yeah, Graveler's pretty slow, so we probably end up in uh, two separate groups. Let me just see if I have him listed here. I thought I had an icon already set up for him. That would have been so... Yeah, you did last week. I do, yeah, sorry. It's under his character. There we go. To do, I will change his name a little bit later. I think it worked. Anyway, uh, not important. There we go. Uh, as the three of you start running off, uh, yeah, Graveler does move slower um, than uh, most of you, I believe. Yeah, I think he's got twenty for movement instead of thirty. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's able to to keep up, but not keep up to people running. So it would kind of naturally split off into two groups. Um, however, Medric, you did have uh, your light spell, so you have a little, a little vision there. Um, Annie and, and I do have dark vision too. Yeah, Annie and well, uh, true. Annie and Silas would also notice that uh, Medric glows slightly. While it's not enough to see by, you could spot him at quite a distance uh, because he himself is kind of like a little, a little lit torch. All right. Let's see here. I need to see if I have this map set up the way I want to. Uh, no, I do not. Okay. One moment, please, as I as I look to the map that I intended to set up and then remembered I set the wrong one up. <laughs> I'm going to AFK for like 30 seconds then. Okay. I'll take Hear a moment me. to set this up. Interlude music. <laughs> I wish I had. Uh, I wish I had some. Okay. Yeah. Did something go bam bam? Right. Make sure I was not as far off as I thought I was. I am missing Graveler, though. Right. Sorry for the delay. Okay, I think that's probably going to be sufficient.
Okay. okay. I think we're still waiting for Medric to return. But as you're running along, you're kind of weaving towards um, where you believe they might have entered along the uh, edge of the city. And more or less at this point, you're following the sounds of fighting going on. Um, you hear the sounds of okay. guards shouting uh, as well as uh, uh, kind of the cries, the war cries, if you will, of the the sea devils themselves. Oops, okay, that's back. better than not hearing anything. I'm back. All right. So, um, basically, uh, uh, as I was explaining to the other two, Medric, uh, mm -hmm. you have been kind of weaving your way over to the side of the city. And, um, while finding nothing in particular at the uh, edge, aside from, unfortunately, a few dead guards, uh, evidence that something had definitely passed through here, their bodies look uh, smashed and soaked. Um, but the, the, uh, you're following, more or less, following Silas and Annie in, in particular, who you can just make out in the dim light. Uh, but uh, Silas and Annie uh, seem to be following some sort of sound, which every once in a while you catch uh, the sound as well. It's swallowed up quickly by the, the clouds and by the rain around you, but it's the sound distinctly of fighting, the sounds of swords and other uh, weapons being struck and ringing out in, in clear sounds like bells in this night, as well as the sounds of the guards uh, shouting to each other, and the hissing uh, war cries of the sea devils themselves. Um, for this map, um, what I'm going to do is because Medric and uh, Graveler are a bit behind, um, unless Silas and Annie decide to wait, then, uh, then uh, Medric and, and Graveler will arrive next uh, round, essentially. Uh, I'm not going to count off rounds until we get actually into some sort of combat, but you find yourself along one of the, the side streets on the uh, south western side of town uh, let's see okay so actually let's to figure out how much of that I can actually see yeah what is your dark vision distance 60 feet so about to the not quite to the middle of the map yeah so I can see a up to the area with a guard and two unnamed ones. Do they seem to be fighting, or are they uh, um, You can hiding? see the, the guard uh, in front of you seems to be getting ready, as if he's holding on uh, and waiting to see what's going on. He can't really see. It looks like he's kind of looking back and forth, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, you do see a couple of people, uh, definitely not guards, at least not dressed in the guard clothing, who seem to be uh, kind of looking to see what's going on as well. Um, maybe curious about the noise, or maybe they're there for some other reason you're not sure, but they are kind of hiding a little bit uh, in the alleyways. Okay, well, since uh, since Silas still can't really see actually what's going on, because he can't see what we can see, he'd still be charging forward okay. until he can see what's actually going on. Andy, you're having trouble seeing anything at all, but Silas, after hesitating for a second, seems to be charging forward. What are you doing? I keep pace with him. Okay. Uh, let's see. You're... Wait, let me check something else. Uh, well, no, 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 never mind. It wouldn't work because I wasn't next to her. Because yeah. I was thinking, like, what if I just give you the rock that has the light spell on it? Is it going to turn off if it's out of my hand or it but I'm not next to you? Normally, um, but you, okay. uh, you are too far behind them at this point. So just moving the two of you up to about the middle. Uh, the guard uh, 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 jerks hearing the noise behind you and kind of leans up against the wall, holding his sword out, ready to fight. Uh, Do you acknowledge him at all? <laughs> yeah. No, just player is thinking. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll tell him. Uh, well, I'll tell the other two in particular. Uh, uh, head back toward the center of town. It's safer. 
uh, and then I'll just, I guess, say hello to the guard. I'll uh, ask the guard what the situation here is. And I'll tell Annie that I can see sea devils up ahead. Okay. The guard, you know, hesitating because he kind of sees you come out of nowhere. Uh, at the at the sort of human voices that he's hearing from the the strange people coming out of the dark, uh, you see him kind of kind of relax a little bit. Monsters, uh, they've come run over the town. They're everywhere, and they've got bigger ones with them too. Uh, I, I I I heard some noise over here, so I tried to come over, but I, I don't know what's going on. What are these things? Silas is muted. Uh, Silas is a sea devils. Damnation. What are they coming for? What do they want? How many of them they are They want there? to kill us all. Uh, let's see, actually, what he would, how he would respond to that. Oops, let me try typing it correctly. Kind of nods his head. Well, if that's the case, they're going to have to work really hard at it. You better stay back. That's a and he turns and starts stalking towards the uh, the fight. You see him kind of resolve himself a little bit, square his shoulders up a little bit, uh, shake his head to get some of the water out of his out of his eyes, uh, draw his sword, straighten his back, and start heading towards that direction. The roads now are. are while mostly made of stone, a lot of the mud has been churned up from this heavy rain. It makes it a little bit slippery. Not too bad right where you are, though. Mm. Uh, oh, um, we'll need control over our characters. Oh, you don't have that on the I screen? Seem to have... Oh, no, no, never mind. It's because I went to the measuring screen. Ah. My bad. <laughs> um... I will say at this point, Medrick, you're just coming to the edge of this map now, you and uh, and Graveler. Um, for Graveler, uh, this has been about... Jeez, I'm trying to think exactly how long it would be. Probably about 15 minutes of his time right now. Okay. Uh, and yeah, Silas's. is... Uh... Extra three versions of himself are gone. Okay. Reminds me, I, uh, I should have a character sheet somewhere. Let's put this to note how many spell slots he has left. Um, Do I think that lighting a hooded lantern would work in the weather? I mean, they're designed to be um, used in bad weather. That's one of the one of the functions of the hood is to limit the the exposure to rain. So it, it would function, if that's what you're asking. Okay, I I, I will do that. Okay. Besides you, Silas, you see the 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 light of the lantern uh, light up. I don't. What what uh, what shape of the light are you using at the moment? Are you going to have it narrow or are you going to have it broad? Um, I, um, just give me two seconds here. I'm trying to find my, ah, there we go. Um, I'll just have it broad right now. Okay. Um, I don't have the facility with the, the lighting on this particular map, but you can assume essentially you can see a cone of light that extends about, uh, geez, I don't know how far that's 30 feet. 30 feet. Okay. Yep. So just keep that assumption in mind. I'm just going to put a, Oh, an perfect. Aura. perfect. We can assume you can spin it around as necessary. You just making it from me is just easier. Yep. Totally. Uh, I'm not looking too good, so I am going to 
mainly stand back and try to help from afar. Okay. Just one second here. Okay. Actually, I do have a potion of healing. Nice. So I am going to drink that. Okay. All right. I think it's all happening again. <laughs> I mean, the good stuff. <laughs> if you are watching this and are confused why I think why things suddenly stopped, shifted all around, and then came back, so am I. Uh, that was kind of unfortunate. Um, if some rich person out there wishes to shower me in technology so this doesn't happen anymore, that would be great. Otherwise, I'll have to shower myself, which doesn't sound nearly as... Well, okay, it does sound pretty good, actually, but I don't have the money at the moment. We'll see. Anyway, who cares? That's just technical issues. Back to it. So what was last happening was that uh, Annie and uh, Silas were approaching the area quickly. Annie just lit up her uh, lamp and took a uh, healing potion, Medric and uh, Sil and uh, Graveler just wandered onto the edge of this. Now, um, you actually don't have your your uh, lamp on at the moment. Oh, there it is. It's not showing up on everybody's screen, weirdly enough. Um, so I will just show. Huh. Do you have that as an aura set up? Yep, that's exactly what I did. Weird. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be showing to everybody, weirdly enough. Yeah. Aura no, one. There's a, there's a setting for showing it to others or not, I think. Yeah, I will just have it emit light. Oh, it doesn't help either. Okay, oh. never mind. <laughs> It's fine. The other two of us both can see in the dark, anyways. So yeah, for those of you as at home, for those of you at home, uh, and he <laughs> has a bullseye lamp, or sorry, a um, not a bullseye hooded. lamp, a hidden, a hidden, hooded, a hooded, hooded lamp, lamp <laughs> which is currently showing a hidden hooded lamp. No, uh, which is currently showing uh, to everybody except for everybody at home. So there's a large amount of light coming <laughs> from it. Uh, with that light, um, the creatures at the far end uh, sort of. Uh, make a howling sound. And with that, you realize that they may have spotted the lamp. And we're going to roll initiative. Uh, as before, Am I rolling right now or next round? Uh, well, you're going to roll initiative, but you'll have no actions this round. Okay. Um, you'll just be arriving on the scene. Oh. So, that is not a good roll. Uh, as, as before, if you pick your character uh, icon before hitting the roll, it'll actually show up in the tracker, but for now I've got it. Crap. I keep forgetting every time. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to pick a Can I roll for Graveler, though? Uh, yes, you can. How you should be able to select this icon and then from his sheet, click the little in initiative. Uh, uh, it's not letting me select him. Oh, just a second. I'll make sure you have access to him. I may not have set him up on this particular sheet controlled by all players. There you go. Aha. And all of my other windows didn't open. <laughs> so all my character sheets are closed. All right. Initiative. Can I roll it from its character sheet or what? Yes. Yep. There's a little, uh, looks like a die right beside the stats. Oh, okay. It says in it. In it to win it. Exactly. Okay, I don't think I have any of those. Even though he didn't do that great. And... There. Flip flat. <clears throat> oh, did any of mine show? Ah, they didn't update it. All right. It's, it's all manual all the time. Uh... 
Should I be seeing the initiative tracker? Ah, uh, there we go. Found it. So the answer is yes. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. If you, if I have it on, I have my video on the right side of my screen, and I had it in full screen for a minute, and I had moved it. But when I like made the window smaller, it didn't move the tracker with it. Gotcha. And given all the complexities I already have, I don't have the connection between Roll Twenty and and uh, D and D Beyond. So there will be a few things I have to manually roll here. Pardon me. Cuckoo. Wow, that's terrible. Awesome. All right. And. Uh, oh, yeah, these guys. All right. Holy moly. Wait, it did. Okay. Hang on. It did actually add some of the things that I thought it didn't add. I don't have two of those. They're actually the same one. Okay. Uh, so, to set the scene, once again, the, yeah. the rain uh, pouring down, lightning overhead, crashing, giving it a lot of, a lot of sound and noise. Um, you realize that not only is vision restricted, but also communication if you're not within 10 feet of each other, it's going to be very hard to hear what each other is saying as well. So keep that in mind when you're maneuvering around. Uh, that includes speaking to uh, Graveler. Uh, when the late light is lit and you can hear the fighting going on down there, the guard who's charging in towards that general direction, um, you do hear the howl of one of the creatures. It must have spotted you. Or maybe it spotted the guard. It's hard to tell. But they definitely seem to be focused in your direction. Annie. Well, maybe it's the French Sharp Rock. Sure. <laughs> and you're up. Hello. Um, I'm trying to find out what I have that is range and one-handed. Uh, I have some darts. So dart throwing it is, it seems. Just keeping in mind that you can't really see much from where. Uh, actually, you can see at the edge of that lamp. But that's about it. You see the back of the guard yep. at the moment. Uh, I forget what the speed is. 30 feet. Um, I'm going to go here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to have a dart ready to throw if something comes within 20 feet of me. Okay, then. Hold your action for that. Um, do do? All right. All right, moving up forward, and we'll actually just come into the light. Uh, as you see kind of off in the distance, the, the sort of shimmery uh, a strange, shapeless form that seems to be moving forward towards you, slightly bluish tint from the flashes of lightning overhead. And it kind of oozes and twists and turns moving forward until it emerges into your light. It looks like a humanoid-shaped uh, 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 body of water. I mean, it's, it's a water elemental to be technical, but in this particular case, it, it seems to have this crazed... Uh, swirl about it, almost like it itself is a vortex. Uh, it does come within view at that particular point for you. I said within 20 feet. Within 20 feet? Okay. Well, yep. it's, con it's continuing to move. So, yep. let's see. Uh, <clears throat> the other direction. I think that's 20 feet there, actually. May I roll a wisdom roll to see if I think this dart is going to do anything uh sure like because this looks like i'm going to be throwing a dart into water it kind of feels that way i will allow you to make the wisdom roll actually with advantage uh, that is a dyslexic moment uh Fifteen. 
17. 17? Uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're needed to make sure that my six and nines were right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even at 14, you would have still made it, I think. But uh, yeah, you get the impression that this this thing is is amorphous, and uh, and you've thrown stones at water before, and water does not seem to care. Uh, Yo, uh, you... so I will wait for something a bit more solid. Okay, it's to, it continues to charge forward and in fact ends up uh, uh, kind of flowing over first the guard who looks down at this water flowing over him that seems to move almost like a wave where it, it dives down and then gushes upward at your feet, engulfing both of you. Uh, you find yourself buried in water. Uh, let's see here. And from... Being an elemental in the other campaign, uh, I believe that that extinguishes my flame. Uh, actually, yes, it does. It is a non-magical flame, so it goes out. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Make a strength saving throw. And we'll make one for the guard as well. Five. Uh, and the guard does a bit better than you, actually. All right. The water buffets around you, and you find your very own lamp kind of rushing and bashing against your uh, your chest. You take 12 points of bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. How many points? Five? Twelve. Twelve? Oh, I'm not looking good. All right. The guard, however, uh, kind of manages to slice through it with his sword. And it seems not to have gotten a grab on him. Uh, do, 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 actually, and that means that he... Oops, I'm going to move the thing for a second. Uh, it kind of gets washed out. Actually, let's see this side. Gets washed out. Uh, that's that one's turn. This one is going after this guard. Uh, I'm going to try to do the same thing. Wow, okay. Yeah, he washes out right. towards the guard, and the guard sort of uh, uses the momentum. Uh, none of you see this, which is kind of sad, but he, he basically surfs the thing on, on the other side, putting his feet out in front of him, using his, his blade kind of as an impromptu surfboard, and slides out the other side. That guy's lucky. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Silas, up ahead of you, you see this thing swarm into view, and then suddenly encapsulate Annie. It's not looking good. She seems to be drowning. The guard gets shoved out the other side. Well, 20 feet to move up to there, and I'm going to try and grab her and pull her out. Okay. Uh, that would be your, um, let's say, athletics or acrobatics. You can either lean into it or you can, uh, you can uh, just use sheer force. 12. Unfortunately, you've grabbed onto her, but she's still being held in the swirling waters, this vortex that's around her. Hmm. Well, I think that's all I can do. Okay. It's the Sea Devil's turn. Let's see. Uh, yeah. on this guy. Uh, this sea devil goes over and makes a strike at this poor citizen over here. Oh, actually, wait. I have their character sheets. They can just do that. Uh, let's see. Uh... Oh, actually, that 
is... Nope, that's a hit. That's a nasty hit. And... Followed up by a stab. Uh, and this guy, this poor nameless citizen, is killed. No. The sea devil cries out with, with uh, joy. And this one smashes into this building. Busts through the door. And runs inside. This one making an attack. Well, you might want to move the map a bit. Anyone who's watching can't see that. Thank you for reminding me. There we go. Uh, this one takes a bite out of dude. I'm not happy with that. Having survived one thing, as they typically do. It's the same icon, too. I just realized. That icon tends to do pretty well, you know, defending itself. <laughs> Not so well against uh, the pair of these things. It's in a terrible spot right now. Uh, that is their turn. Uh, these citizens. Uh, there's a slamming of a door actually right there. Uh, those two are going to stay where they are. This guy goes screaming up uh, this way. This woman goes and hides inside here. Uh, they don't have a huge role to play. Uh, you and the Guardian are still back there. Yep. Is it my turn? It's the Guardian's turn at the moment. Actually, Guardian okay. and you, so you go kind of at the same time. But uh, all you're really doing is moving onto the scene. So you're there now. Yeah. Arriving now. Um, if you want to take an action in prep, you know that there's some sort of fight up ahead. I would allow that. I'd allow that. It'd be nothing that takes place in the battlefield. But no, you guys are still back there. That's where okay. you arrive on your turn. Oh, uh, gotcha, okay. But if you want to take a, a moment, if you have a, a, a buffing spell or something like to prepare, you're welcome to do that right now. I was going to cast Bless on the party, but I'm too far away. Well... Anything else? You no, know, like both things I want to cast are both concentration spells. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Yeah. Or the decision process is taking a while. <laughs> Nothing's going to interact with you for a moment, so I'll go, I'll move through the turn. Yeah. And so long as you've got, if you if you wanted to do something by the time your turn comes up around again, I'll give you some more time to think about it. Okay. So in meanwhile, the guards. This guy. <laughs> right away. <laughs> this guy right, beside right you, uh, 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 Silas, is going to try to help you with Annie's predicament. Um. Basically, he'll be rolling with uh, advantage because of your, uh, because of both of you working together. Yeah. Uh, he's not <clears> super <throat> strong, but uh, it's one. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the two of you are still having a hard time fighting off against this thing. Uh, let's see, this guy. Uh, this guy sees himself in a bad spot, <laughs> and is going to choose to disengage and get the hell out of there. Uh, kind of retreating up against the other wall. Uh, meanwhile, a couple more guards move into place and take on this this thing that's in front of them. Let's see. First guard takes a swing. I don't think that hits. Fortunately, not. Second guard takes a swing. Ooh. That was terrible. Uh, as they both kind of poke at it with their uh, their swords and are having no luck whatsoever. Annie. You have Hello. a chance to break free. You probably won't. I will that. try to. Who do I trust with this? Um... You will have advantage because you have two hands basically trying to, to pull you out of this. Pull me Oh, uh, well, that is, that's a natural 18, so 19. All right. You are able to move. And I think because of the way that people are holding you, you're able to move in the direction of Silas or the guard. And end up cool. I will go in Silas' direction. Can you? There you go. And, um, so I'll 
go here and then uh, how much movement would I have? I want to disengage. Uh, you would have, uh, you've only moved, uh, I'll say five feet because it was assisted. Cool. Okay. I will then move 25 feet to here uh, after having disengaged. And that is my turn. Actually, can I duck into this corner? Would yep. I be able to do two yep. feet and then duck into the corner instead? Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. I will do that. And I am, I, I, I look bad. I am out of breath and look very bad. All right, you kind of, kind of gasping, uh, pulled out of this this uh, this thing, uh, this crazy monster vortex of water. Speaking of which, the crazy vortex monster of water. <coughs> uh, let's see if I can. First of all, roll that. Oh, look at that. Uh, however, I just realized the map can side scroll. It's like I don't see that part of the map. <laughs> Here's my uh, minus one int modifier for the day. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the big creature is going to take a strike at both Silas and the guard. At Silas, thirteen to hit. I do not believe so. No. That's that's good. It would have hurt. I got my shield out. Needs a seventeen. There you go. Uh, it's a kind of swashes over the the shield. Uh, and the the guard, seeing how you've kind of defended yourself, uh, has uh, has a shield. Uh, and does kind he of says, the same. Sort I of should thing. do that too. Basically, yeah. Uh, and the, and both of you, if you weren't already soaked, are now absolutely soaked as part of the creature sort of washes over the two of you. Uh, uh, waterproof jacket. <laughs> Oh yeah! Well, there you go. <laughs> Take that elemental. You, you, you're looking great. You're looking good. Uh, meanwhile, the other one uh, is going to do basically the same thing against these two other guards that are here. Uh, and wow, maybe they've all gone to the same school as they are being battered and bruised, but not broken by this crazy big thing. Silas, you're up. Uh, well, um. Could I assume that I'd grabbed my staff again back when I was at the dock? Sure. That right. is a logical assumption. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to charge up my staff and take a whack at the take a whack at the uh, elemental with my magic weapon. Okay. The elemental's not going to like that. I got to twenty for nine damage. Eight. Nice. Uh, as indeed, as predicted. It does not like that as you swish your staff through it. <clears throat> and you can and see then, that it's, uh, it's, its vortex kind of spins and then loses its, its natural seamless gyration only for a second, but you know you heard it. And then uh, instead of moving, I look over to the guard and says, we've got to hold it here. There's a grim nod from the, the, uh, the guard that's there beside Reinforcements you. are on the way. Oh, yeah. You hope so. Uh, the half orc yep. guard uh, looks at you and kind of grimly sets his teeth. All right. Uh, that is. Uh, are you going to bonus? No, I did uh, cast the cantrip. Oh, yes. So I'm done. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can't see him. Uh, you hear some clattering and smashing in the, in the nearby building as the sea devil is going crazy inside. This one's going to run up this way. Uh, let's see here. You hear him battering away at the door, but unable to break it. Because that would be funny. <laughs> Meanwhile, this one crosses the street. Goes to attack at this dude. Oh, all right. Uh, snaps forward, but the guy uh, uses his sword kind of to pivot. Like he throws the sword and uses its weight. Uh, unfortunately, oh no, actually, that <laughs> also defends. So as he's spinning, the thing tries to take his spear, uh, take the spear through him, and he spins and knocks it aside with the shield. Not bad, not bad at all. Yay for shields. Yeah. Yay. Uh, these guys are all... Uh, you see, uh, Annie, uh, at the far end of this hallway, this guy just vanish. I'm not sure how, it looked like it was a solid wall. And 
side she's gone to. Which guy was that? Uh, up uh, north of it. Yeah, that guy. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, Medric and Graveler. We'll run towards the battle as far as we can. Well, Graveler's sh uh, slower than you, um, but uh, you do have He's a character a sheet, by the way. Dashing? He can dash, yep. We need to get Graveler trained as a rogue so he can do the triple mm -hmm. dash thing. Can you see the, the, the Zorn Guardian sheet okay? Yep. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah, he's not fast, but he's eager. And I'm sprinting too. Why, is there something I should be, like, noticing on the sheet that I'm not noticing? Or No, no, I just want to make sure if you needed to roll something, you had that available. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't know if I'd set that up to be shown to you. Okay, and as you... This is about as far as I can make it. Huh. Hmm. And now you see... Uh... Yeah, what is your... You have uh... dark vision, so... You yep. can see this this vortex of water, living water, which is facing off against two shield-bearing, uh, strong, strapping folks. Well, at least one of them, and the other is Silas. <laughs> so, uh... Actually, not far from you, you also see uh, Annie kind of slumping up against the wall, probably soaking wet, breathing hard, pale skin. So if I cast a spiritual weapon, what? At a court, less than a quarter of my hit points. <laughs> yeah, it was a nasty hit. I can't get to you right now, but next round, yes. Um, I'll cast. Yes. So the spiritual weapon, can I cast move and attack as a bonus action? Uh, what I can say is you could have move. You could have cast spiritual weapon last round. Remember, I have given that opportunity to have done a prep, and spiritual weapon would have been one of them. Um, it will have used up one um, one uh, uh, one round of its use if you do that, though. Yeah, no, because uh, it, it goes slower than I do, so I wouldn't have caught up anyway. Okay. So can, yeah. Okay, you can cast it now. I, I just think. But yeah, you can only cast uh, you can cast it, and then it can attack, but it can't move yet. Okay. So I'd cast it like as far away as possible as like or as close as possible to the uh, elemental. Okay. So just two more to the east. I'm gonna give you control over that. Yes. So you have control over it now. You can place it where yeah. it should be approached or would have okay. There you go. Poof. And I kind of imagine that there's this tiny little spark of sunlight that appears where it starts and that kind of spins and spins and spins until it slowly expands out to the, the shape of the burning hammer spinning and whirling in place oh yeah um just you know that's got a range of 60 feet on casting yeah so you could actually put it on the other oh, side of the... i just can't count okay cool <laughs> that's why the ruler is there because frankly it's a little deceptive otherwise all right yeah. so it is okay, there. Now it's <laughs> it is there and burning and it can attack Yeah. And uh. It tried to. And unfortunately, yeah. uh, while it seems really impressive and grows to the great size and burn, burn. It's like a magical burn, hammer transformation. Uh, unfortunately, the way this vortex kind of spins and swirls, it just sort of catches one of the open air as it's, as it's uh, swirling around. Uh, and there's not much the Guardian can do. Uh, I will say that the cobblestone streets do not count as worked stone. Okay. So if uh, if the guardian uh, if Graveler wishes he can burrow through it. Okay, wait. Does he move faster while burrowing? Probably. I don't think he actually moves any faster, but he is hidden essentially. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. Time so could I like have him burrow and like come up underneath the earth or the water elemental and just like be like boom uppercut, maybe no he he could it would be yeah. nice. To see anyway. Yep, I mean he's not close enough to do that right now, but that is a, definitely a tactic. <laughs> nice. 
face. And he would count as having essentially a, a, a sneak attack. Giggit. All right. The guards. The guard right beside you, uh, Silas, taking another swing at this critter. This guy does not seem like defense is his way. Uh, good strike, though. Uh, I will say he's using two hands. So the shield is kind of just dangling off of his arm. Oh, good, good, good hit all around. Uh, the one facing off against this guy is... He's going full defensive, because... This guy's right in his face. These two guards making similar attacks. Uh, yep. Ooh. Two hits, one of them being a crit. Nice. A. And so, let's see. That uh, second one is a crit, so that's five plus eight. Uh, oops, I don't have that. All right, they have cornered it into the into the uh, room for the moment. That is them, Annie. Hello. Um. You see your friend Medric glowing slightly. Actually, sorry, he's carrying a lock a rock with a light on it, so gl glowing quite brightly at the moment. Yeah. Um. I am going to try to hide. Uh, if I need to back up a little more to do so, I will. Uh, and I will take out my rapier, drop my... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take out my rapier and I'll hold an attack. Okay. In case anything comes after you. Yeah, because I, I ain't looking, looking too good. Uh, where's my stealth? There's my stealth. Well, that is cut. Are you hiding only from enemies or from me too? Like if I, if I were to like, I don't know, go find you for heals later, can I see you? <laughs> well, I rolled a twelve. Okay, okay so yeah. <laughs> so probably can find her anyway if you need to. All right. I'm breathing a bit too heavy to hide very well. <laughs> Uh, the creature that is in front of Silas and the guard. The guard a little dismayed because he hit very strongly, but notice that it barely disrupted the uh, water that uh, is flowing around. But it turns towards the new enemy and swings twice at the flaming, uh, the natural enmity of a flaming uh, hammer. And just for, for, for fun, misses and misses. So you got two vortexes kind of fighting each other at the moment. Neither one able to really effectively do it. This other dude also going to be striking at these two guards. One each. Wow. <laughs> this could be a long battle. <laughs> Maybe those guards are going to get named too. I, they, they just might. They just might. <laughs> uh, that's their turn. Silas. Um. Hmm. Besides you guys, by the way, in this the reason this uh, this streetway is a little narrower, uh, that is a pair of public toilets. Gotcha. Well, hmm. Yeah. What the heck? Um. I'm going to hit it with the empowered staff again, and hopefully uh, that uh, help. Dang. As you poke inward on it, the little magical swirl that's around it uh, collides with the pattern once again. And again, taking a large chunk out of this, out of its uh, regular smooth movement. Um... 
Yeah, shoot, I don't really have anything I can do as a bonus action, so. Uh, I do, uh, <clears throat> I do uh, yell to the guard next to me, keep it up. You're doing great. <laughs> doing just fine. Uh, all right. Uh, the Sea Devils. This one. Trash, trash, trash. Uh, this one. Swearing off that door. Tries another door. Bang. Crashes through that door. You hear screaming inside. Actually, no, you don't hear screaming inside in that particular door. It's a storeroom. Uh, but nonetheless, that's his deal. This one. Sorry, I keep saying this one as if you noticed, but I will I'll remember to hold click. Uh, trying again at this guy. Uh, stabbing with all of his might. Yeah, another one defending himself. This may be Gordon's brother. <laughs> uh, let's see, that's all of them. The There's his twin. <laughs> they, they actually are twins. The triplets. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, let's see, citizens, citizens moving. Uh, Medrick, you see a woman coming out of a door, uh, peering very carefully, looking at seeing what's going on. Uh, she seems uncertain, but also uh, you, you get the, the feeling she ran inside, realized there wasn't a way out of there, and came back out again. Uh, and looks to you for reassurance. Do you offer any? Is it my turn? Is it my turn? Uh, well, you can have a reaction if you will. Okay, I'll just yell at her. Well, yell because she's just ten feet away. It's like get inside. Don't stay around here. Like get okay. to safety. Make a um, make a persuasion check. To the chopper. What? <laughs> you make a persuasion check to get her to go to the chopper. <laughs> God damn it, I closed my window. Why do I always do this? Okay. Probably because of all the, the, the amount of noise rushing around and the... the uh, the chill it's a little bit in the air right now she doesn't seem to quite understand what you said it is uh graveler's turn all right he will dash also okay is he still stomping forward on the ground oh yeah That's as far as you can make it. The Terminator in his natural form. All right. That's uh, his. Can he, for a bonus action, can he... Let, let me check, actually. Because I closed his window, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has much uh, on uh, bonus actions, unfortunately. Okay. But, I mean, can he, like, Earth Glide as in... That's his movement. Even though he's dashed already. That's his mm -hmm. movement. Okay. He's done. Okay. Medric. Your allies coming charging up beside you, this this rocky being. Your flaming hammer is out. You've offered words of comfort to uh some strange poor citizen. At least they were kind of words of comfort. You never really got that class. Yeah. So I'll take ten feet of my movement, go to where Annie is, and cast cure wounds because she needs it. <laughs> Andy, you look like shit. <laughs> and Andy's kind of like, but you don't see me. You don't. Okay. All right. like you <laughs> You get seven HP back. Well, that doubles what I have, so. Cool. So I got 20 feet of movement left. So that's all my movement. And then I will attack with a spiritual weapon. All right. And don't forget to feel the burn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hammer time. Uh, okay. 
I was going to say, that's a lot of damage that you just took, but no, no, that's not the damage. That's just... No. <laughs> uh, that is a hit. As the flaming hammer comes and collides with this creature. And that's... How do I just forget this every time? Jeez. <laughs> Right. Is it a D6 or a D8? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a D8, but... Is it on your oh, yeah, sheet? D8. Yeah. D8 plus your uh, wisdom modifier. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot to roll for round damage earlier, so that's two. Three. It's like Ignis is, is like rental fee or something. Uh, it should only be plus one, I think, because you only heal their one die. Oh, it's a level two spell, though. Uh, oh, uh, oh, the healing spell. Right. That's another one that I forgot to take. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I meant for the spiritual weapon that I forgot. Yeah, to yeah. Spell. Okay, so the damage was six. There's a lot of dice rolls. I just want to make sure I get the right one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Six force. And I think 20 was like a damage from a long time ago. And because I had 28 on my sheet <laughs> when I started this session. Uh, and I'm now at 24. All right. A whole flurry of, of uh, fury sparks launch themselves around Medric. Um, remember, you're only taking half of that damage from each of those. Yeah. Uh, as your flaming hammer carves out a good chunk. For a moment, it is almost as though this, this strangely humanoid thing has lost a limb, but it quickly reforms the limb in another place. That's the nature of being a vortex. Uh, and that is your turn. Yep. Uh, the guard, once more, trying with his... I should have made them up as a sheet. I meant to. That is a miss from the guard there. This guard, again in full defense, until you can find an opening. The other two, striking. Wow. Okay, at least one of them. Stabbing in towards this creature. Slowly making headway. Very slowly. Annie, you feel a bit better now. The warmth of Ignis has been reached through you. It takes a little of the chill off. A little bit. Um, I'm going to start a new tactic. I'm going to round up, round up people. Operation Human Shield. No. <laughs> Basically. I don't think that's um, what she means. I hope that's not what she means. <laughs> I mean, she may be learning more of her position a little bit now, I guess. Yup. Um, I am going to... Um... You can just barely make uh, out the woman across the way in the other alley. Yeah. Um, so you said that I saw this guy go through a wall. Mm -hmm. Seem to. Yeah. Okay. That's weird. I'll check that out later. Um, I am going to go up to this lady and ask, is this your house? Or do you know whose it is? <laughs> Uh, the make an intuition check. Let's do it that way. Let's be, let's be more fun that way. Insight. Insight. Or sorry, yes, insight. <laughs> Just make a roll of some kind. Um, <laughs> just some kind of roll. That is a natural seventeen. So that is eighteen. Okay. Um. What she says is, yes. What you see, though, is the reaction in her eyes when you say, is this your house? Do you live here? And no, this is definitely not her house. Uh, also, you get the feeling like she's a little embarrassed 
because she probably was at another house that she wasn't supposed to be at. And she kind of, all that okay. floods over you at that sort of insight in that moment that she's kind of in the wrong side of town from where she normally is and it was embarrassed to be there and also terrified. Cool. Um, Cheating on somebody? It, it's, it's a, I shouldn't be here, I'm not supposed to be here versus I was robbing the place. Right. Cool. Uh, I am going to say, okay, let's let's go in here, and kind of herd her into one of the houses. Okay. Uh, the one next to you is locked. Uh, okay. Um. Is this one? Uh, it is also locked. Okay. Apparently, the word that you'd spread a lot of earlier about locking up your places, people actually listen to that. Yup. Um, so it would be 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay, so I'll, I'll be able to get back to here, no problem. Um... I am going to uh, tell her that we're going to get her out of there, and I am going to take a defensive stance in front of her. Okay. As you kind of probably pull out your knife and kind of like, and he comes near me, I'm going to cut him and make them make them really annoyed. Yep. Fair enough. I'm going to get this random person out of here. All right. I mean, she's not random. She has a whole backstory and everything probably has like you know 17 generations worked out at this point and maybe there's a whole family I mean, legacy that she's just dying to tell somebody or maybe not she might just <laughs> 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 meanwhile the annoying people uh which is to say the non-people the water people uh this one in the center of uh silas and fighting a losing battle is going to strike back at the uh, the flaming hammer once more because it annoys the crap out of it. It hits the flaming hammer and its limb passes right on through. It has, uh -huh. it has learned something. Uh, on the other side, it takes a swing at the guard. Oh, wow. Uh, but it's so distracted by the fact that its hand moved through the flaming stuff and didn't seem to burn, but also didn't seem to do anything to it that it's sort of whirling now in, in, uh, in confusion as much as anything else. Meanwhile, the other one, uh, let's see, it is going to try to hit these two guys. Shields save lives, guys. Shields yeah. save lives. As once again, they're kind of bringing up their shield and ba bam you can actually hear the impact of the watery fist against their sh their shield kind of reverberating up this this narrow uh, streetway uh, and uh, but they are un un unbattered weirdly enough Silas um I wonder Let's see what the okay we've Trying to get a handle on ours a little bit. Um, I am going to uh, cast uh, Cold Snap on uh, the oops, the Sea Devil that is fighting back here. Okay. Is just within range. It needs to make a con save against 13. All right. I'm hoping it fails because this attack has never succeeded. Yes. <laughs> Yay. It takes three damage and it gets disadvantage on its next melee attack. All right. As yes, this, this, uh, this sudden... Uh, the the water falling around that seems to freeze for a second and little little shards of of ice uh, seem to pin against its skin and it howls in pain confusion and anger and the guy in front of him looks over his shield and goes ha and hides behind his shield again and i'll uh 
try to yell out uh, just in general. Uh, uh, we're here to help. Just hold on as well as you can. And hope that any of them can actually hear me. And that's it for my turn. All right. Well, the sea devils, let's see, this one has made his way around. Uh, uh, yeah, there. It's not actually there, but that's okay. Uh, this one is taking his time, actually. Oh, wait, I have the character sheet. <laughs> Did I get it? There we go. Ah, bang, bang, crash, crash. Uh, this one stabs at he. At disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> uh, he he kind of darts it's, forward. And it's only the first attack against that gets that, so... Well, he darts forward, and some of the, the shards of ice that seem kind of innocuous and superfluous to the whole effect of the actual spell actually catch him in the jaw, and he finds himself kind of... And you know when you've got uh, accidentally like a chicken bone or something in your mouth and it turns just the wrong way and it stabs upward and downward on your gums? Yeah. Usually it's Doritos, but yeah. Sure. That's a lot safer <laughs> than, than eating chicken bones, I will admit. Well... I'm glad that spell actually had an effect. It most definitely did. It's a pain uh, in the butt to use. And then the second strike uh, also misses. He's still so caught up with it, he's kind of clawing at his own face to try to get this smaller bit of ice out of his cheek. And that's their turn. The woman's right behind you and seems to calm a little bit, Annie. Takes in a deep breath. Okay, okay, I, I'll follow you. And she will act on your turn. She holds her act for you. Uh, it is time for Graveler. I need to change his name. Graveler will. Mm -hmm. Could he make it? He can't share a space with the guard, can he? No. Oh, but he can uh, Yeah. Yeah, he could burrow and come up under it. But is burrowing a bonus action or is it an action? It's his move. Okay. Whenever he moves, he can choose to burrow instead if he's, if he's t uh, touching uh, unworked stone. All right, let's do that. One, two, three. Uh... Does he have enough movement to come up underneath it? Not quite. No, yeah. actually. He can make it right to where uh, Silas or the guard are uh, on his regular move. If he's right here, can he connect with the elemental? Uh, yes, he could just barely connect with him. Okay, so he's going to move here because that is within his range. <laughs> okay. The elemental yeah. essentially is swirling around. All he has to do is pick his turn. Pick his time so that he connects with this vortex. So three claw attacks. There's one claw. Nice. I'm going to pop his window out too. Wow. Um, the first one with advantage because it was when he was coming up. The second two are not, but it didn't matter yeah. in this case. I just opened this window. Where is it? Oh my god. Just close it again. Roll 20 without a mouse is the worst. Oh, I, I didn't close it. I was just looking at the wrong browser. Okay. <laughs> Attack number two. Also a hit. Nice. Hey. His fists are having some effect on this creature, but they are kind of missing a little bit. Uh, third one also hits. Wow. Nice job. And the fourth one. So he is literally punching water. And you can see even from gonna... where you are that it's it's having an effect, but it's also the water gets to flow around his fist. It's not as strong as you'd like. Well, let's see how the elemental reacts to getting drank. Getting drank? Is that what you said? Yeah. Uh -huh. This is a bite attack, you know, with his mouth, so he just, like, swallows a part of it, I guess. And that was only supposed to roll once. You're rolling with a keypad, man. <laughs> or a oh, touchpad. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
I just never heard of it as drank before. Uh, yeah, as he kind of uh, he extends his jaw in this abnormal way, and even the bottom of his jaw is mutable by his form, uh, and kind of extends out these nasty-looking uh, teeth in this sort of pincer attack that scoops up part of the water, and yeah, there's a satisfying groop as he swallows some of it. <coughs> Nice. Yeah, that was his turn. All right. Medric. And can I even get to the guy now? <laughs> you can't get cl- you can't get next to him, no. The the space all around him is this flurry of action and and uh uh and uh the creature itself. All right. Well, in that case, Sacred Flame. Okay, that's a dexterity save. Hmm? Yep. Yeah. I forget what the roll is. It's uh, versus... Damn it. Yeah, they have to save against your DC. Spell save DC, yeah. DC is 12, and I just dropped a bunch of things because I'm <laughs> not good at dexterity today. It did a 16. Yeah, that saves. As it's, it's as its swirl kind of moves and... and while the spiritual energy was sent as a sort of flame spark right up the middle of it, it manages it with its vortex uh, shape to literally just surround it and it kind of poof, out of out of existence without hitting it at all. And then spiritual weapon will attack. All right. Oh. Wow. That is not good. No. <laughs> it's because it, it's terrible. because it was trying to dodge that that uh, that other attack of yours. The the uh, the flame uh, that it made it even harder it seems for the hammer to strike. All right, back essentially to the guard who finds himself in a really weird predic- predicament, surrounded by a whole lot of weirdness right now. But being a half orc, he grits it, grits his teeth, and dives in. Hopefully, actually hitting this time. Oh yeah. Nicely done. Uh, oops. Not a D98. That was not right. There. Uh, I stab at thee from Hell's heart as he continues to kind of poke away at this thing. And he's kind of learned a technique where he realizes that his spear isn't doing a lot. So he's kind of figuring out a way to kind of catch this motion. And Silas, you see beside you, this guard start to figure it out as he's watching, going, ah, too many times, I'm missing things. And it's more like he sticks his spear in just the right place where it drags itself across his spear. Cool. Rumble of thunder and cars. His motorized spear. His motorized <laughs> uh, Again, this guy is just going full defense. It works pretty well for these guys. Uh, but the other two are going to take their swings at the other. Uh, that is definitely a miss. And that's a hit. Yay. Uh, as, again, they are stabbing at him. Keeping it occupied for the moment, but not making much progress otherwise. Uh, Annie. The safety of this person seems to be placed entirely in your hands. Her trust is with you. You feel her hand reach into yours, looking for reassurance. Well, I take her hand, and I would like us to... Basically, I'm going to swing her to this spot here behind me, okay. by the door. And I would like to move. I will give you control over here if you want to move her in the future. I'm going to move here and have her move to here. Okay, that's a complicated movement, but she, yep, she follows along. Ba- basically, fo- follow the, the wall. Okay. You see her glance uh, back over her shoulder, and maybe, fortunately, everything that's happening down there is kind of invisible beyond Medric's own light. You see him kind of glowing with his little uh, uh, rock of light, and you can catch the glints of, of the battle, but you think that she might have been spared the horrific sight. Cool, cool. Uh, so that is my movement. Um... Can I 
use my bonus action help to ha have her defend herself, like help her defend herself if she gets attacked. As long as you're still there, I could say that'd be that'd be yeah. work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do as my bonus action is try to get her, give her a better chance. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I will use my action to hold a rapier attack if something comes close to me. All right. Wait, you said you're holding. You can't hold a bonus action. No, so I'm gonna hold my attack to. Uh, I'm gonna hold my attack, and as a bonus action, I can help. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You can. I forgot that's your. So I, I want to help her defend herself. Yep. Totally. I, I forgot the uh, the class thing about being able to use a bonus to help. Okay. Yeah. Yep. No problem. No problem at all. You're kind of like, okay, if it comes at you, here's what you got to do. Run away it, screaming. Basically, I'm I'm a, I'm a try to tug her out of the way. Okay. <laughs> the water elemental, seeing what's happening in front of it. Hmm. Which way does it go? Hmm. How about it's go wisdom? It's not a lot of wisdom. It slides on forward, engulfing the guard and Graveler. Just almost to the edge of where Medric is, but it doesn't seem to be able to grab the two of them. Medric will need to, or sorry, Graveler will need to make a dexterity saving, or sorry, strength saving throw. And the guard, no, he's has, got this. guard as well. As soon as I find his character nice. sheet. There you go. You told this guy to hold his ground, and he is holding his ground. Wow. However, <laughs> Graveler, on the other hand. Uh, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> Graveler, however, finds himself lifted up off of his feet and starts spinning around in place. Uh, he's considered grappled. Uh, he takes uh, 14 bludgeoning damage. Oh no. But the guard... Is, uh, what's the damage he's, he took uh, last two weeks I ago? Remember, I remember it would be have two since it's non-magical. Or maybe, no, maybe his one don't have that. Do you remember if he took damage last, last session? Um, I can check that other page. I don't yeah. think he did. Uh, just to see if he had anything. He did have some damage. He was at 61. It was something... Oh, okay. So 61 minus 7, that's 54. Okay. Uh, that's easy. Uh, and yes, he does have the piercing slashing from non-magical attacks that aren't ad adamantine. But not bludgeoning. Yeah. This is bludgeoning damage. Yeah. Okay. So he actually takes the full damage. What's 54 minus 3? 47 okay yeah you can in the little space that's there on the on the on the character the little circle you mm -hmm. can actually where the number 47 is you can actually click that and type minus 14 for example to reduce it you don't have to do the math. okay uh, okay the guard however is ejected on the other side and kind of stumbling uh, actually stumbles a little bit but then holds his feet uh, firmly which is pretty impressive uh, that's that one's go. The other one is not able to do that at the moment, so it's going to strike out once more. Blam. And blam. Oh, that time connects nastily. Uh, yeah, this guy goes down, smashed under his shield. One of them is crushed. The other one knocked to one knee as the slam comes down on his feet, or down under his shield, I should say. Uh, Silas. Uh, well, uh, that's just within 60 feet. Okay, um, hoping that my friends here can uh, deal with this. I am going to uh, use uh, Cold Snap on the other elemental okay yeah and hopefully that'll work 
And that was so again, dexterity? Uh, constitution. no, constitution. Oh, okay. Uh, yep, yep, so it succeeds. Yeah, as the, the water flows around, it seems to... Uh, It, it it seems to sort of shift away from the part which gets cold. Uh, do I move forward? Well, it will edge slightly forward, but uh, otherwise stay there. The Sea Devils. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I meant to look that up. Uh... Oh, I don't have my sheet open anymore. I knew there was something I'd forgotten to open after the great collapse of two hours ago. <laughs> uh, one second, please. Well, you know what? I'm just going to make it this anyway. Both the same. Uh, good. And... Good. All right. Uh, this one. Uh, there is a smashing sound as this one comes out of the door to see what's happening. Uh, this one goes to the back, and that's. Where My cat just looked up like, "What the hell was that noise?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, and once more against Defender. <laughs> What anyway? Uh, Defender is holding his own. Full defense. Uh, doesn't do any progress, but doesn't do any regress either. Um, nothing has come closer to. Actually, yep, no, uh, that's good. Nothing has come closer to you and uh, uh, the woman, uh, the unnamed, significant, totally like legacy NPC, Annie. Uh, but she's starting to calm and breathe a little bit. She doesn't have anything to really defend herself with, but she's kind of tightened her fists up into uh, into tight balls, and kind of you've been you've been uh, coaching her. It's like, okay, if anything comes in, all you need to do is make sure that you strike, but then step back immediately so you're not going to be hit by it. They'll never know it's coming, and when they're stunned, you can run. Kind of giving, I kind of imagine that little bit of of extra confidence, and she's like, okay, okay, all right, I got it. You got this. Uh, but nothing seems to approach at the moment, and she's not moving unless you're moving. Uh, Graveler can try to free himself from the clutch of this this whirling water spout. He will. He does not like being in the washing machine. Graveler is strong. Graveler is strong and manages to free himself. Uh, and now he's pissed. His... That is his action, though, to free himself from the grappling. Uh, he can try to move, or uh... well, he'll he'll move like just so he's not like inside the thing anymore. Yeah. All right, uh, Medric, your ally is no longer engulfed. Good. And you so also I will... see the sea devil emerge from the door right beside you. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? I will hit something. I'm just trying to decide which thing. <laughs> uh, actually, from that distance, actually, you also have a light. Uh, you can see that the sea devil seems to be carrying something. Oh, what's he carrying? It's hard to say. It looks like it's wrapped up in a blanket or something. Well, whatever it is, you can't have it. So I will <laughs> bash his brains in. Yay! <laughs> With the Warhammer. He prefers that that doesn't happen. Oof, he doesn't have a say in it, though. All right, what's the damage on that? It's only plus. I keep forgetting. Like after playing a wizard for a while, like it's only plus <laughs> strength modifier, right? Yes. Not okay. The damage is ten. Nice. Crack. 
as he comes triumphantly uh, coming out of this door. And then, oh! Yeah. Kind of expression does that drop in your cat? <laughs> she didn't make a move this time. And then the spiritual weapon will move towards the sea devil. Okay. And hit it again. Yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, that hits. Boy, this guy did not fare well. That's funny. Oh. Well, it takes three damage. All right. It certainly does that. All right. Uh, that is your turn. And I'll scream at it. Drop it. Okay. You feel like it would have been a very convincing thing, except you're pretty sure that it had no idea what you're saying. I'll, I'll point to the floor. <laughs> make a make an intimidation check. Why not? <laughs> And I'm right next to him, so he, I'm like yelling at him really loudly. Sure. Okay. Make an intimidation check. I like it. Yeah. That was only a 10. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's going to. Well, why not? Let's roll it out. Oh, wow. Nope. He's intimidated. Um, you see Drop him kind in. of, like, from, from the twin hammer shots, like one from you and then the other one, the flaming one, uh, he kind of looks, and he's crouching down, kind of looking up at you solemnly, and he kind of pr puts the package down on the ground. So there you go. Uh, let's see the guard's turn. Now this thing is clearly, uh, uh, you know, clearly behind him and clearly going to... Uh, Suffer the demise. He will take a swing at the thing. Uh, and actually hits. Pretty good. Nice. As the guard beside you starts to carve into the back of this thing. More confidence gained. Uh, the one next to me and me and uh, the hammer and... Yep. Okay. Yeah, that half worker has been fighting there all this time. Uh, let's see... He's going to stay full defense because that's worked for him. Uh, she needs to change something if she's going to do that. She's going to... Uh, her friend has fallen. She's facing against the thing alone. No, she's going to go full defense as well. They, they aren't going to make much progress this way. That's not their choice. Uh, however, uh, top of the round... You start to hear uh, the sounds of horse hooves clattering off the cobblestones coming up the street. Nothing yet. Uh, Annie, you hear that sound coming closer and closer up the street from you. Um. I will. Um. I will continue to move in that direction. Um. I'll follow the direction of the hooves, if I can figure that out. Okay. Yeah, you can tell that it's coming from the opposite direction where everything is. Yep. Uh, I will try to guide her that way. Okay. So we can get to there. As you come around, you can see just a pinprick of light up ahead. I will allow you to make a perception check, please. Cool. Perception. That is actually, like, weirdly, like, my third 17 I rolled in a row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's an 18 total. All right. I rolled, like, a 16, or 15, 16, 17 my last few rolls. Nice. Uh, as you uh, can uh, start to, he to hear the figure first before seeing it, and then seeing that small pinprick of light, you focus your eyes just ever so slightly, and uh, recognize the, uh, the uh, mid-sized strong horse that Captain Verendel is riding. And you, in fact, recognize that the, the uh, distinct armor that Verendel wore as well, uh, it's clearly uh, him barreling down this road. Sword drawn, uh, lantern uh, on the uh, uh, hook on the uh, saddle. 
Cool, cool. Um, just to let you know, I was just told Brody's going to be here at 5.30 to pick me up. Okay. You all die. Easy. <laughs> all right. But, 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 but uh, <laughs> same thing. I'm going to hold an action to attack anything that comes up to us. I'm going to shield her. Okay. Uh, let's see. These things. Uh, does it get that back? It does. Um, the. Hmm. You've done a lot to it. I think it's angry. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't move yet. Uh, it will, however, uh, bash away at Medric. Because you burn, you're a burner. It doesn't like burners. So one uh, one uh, tendril of water reaches out towards you. Twenty two hits. Oh yeah. Eighteen damage. Wow. It kind of collides with you, taking you off your feet for a second. And then another one. This time, comically, kind of winding up like a big baseball swing. There's a fifteen hit. I uh, know. Fortunately, you've learned your lesson. Or maybe you were slightly doubled over by the first hit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the second one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, whatever story you wish to tell later, it seems to miss you. Meanwhile, the other one uh, attempting to slam at this one who's been defending. Uh, misses on the first strike. Misses on the second strike. That would have been very bad. Um, holding off for now. I do need to... Add them to the initiative tracker. And, uh, oh, right. I have to do that manually. Pardon me. Pardon me, coming through. Pardon me. Pardon me, coming through. All right. Uh, Silas. Um... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bash at the uh, bash at the uh, water uh, elemental that's next to me. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, not great damage, but it's magical, so. Indeed, it's disruptive in its pattern. Um, yeah, I think I gotta risk it. I am going to move. Uh, over here. Okay, it will lash out at you. Yep. Ooh. It kind of sends you a little bit faster spinning on your way. Yeah, it takes over half my hit points in one hit. Wow. These things are nasty. But you managed to get outside of its clutches into an open space. Yep. Yeah. And that's that's all I can do for right now. Okay. The sea devil hemmed in by uh, you and uh, having put down its package well, let's see. Uh, let's see if it grows a spine. It's not much of a spine. Uh, it backs away into the building. You will have an opportunity attack if you choose. Medric. If I choose. Eh. It was How still, bad does it look? Looks pretty bad and it's and its head is still low kind of kind of in this submission submissive position, hands out in front of it. Whimpers a little bit as it backs away. Yeah, I, I get bigger problems and like in the shape of an elemental, so I'll just let it go away. Okay. Backs off inside somewhere. Uh, this one, however, has its uh, attempt. That misses. Oh, oh, that might. Does that. 
Ah, oh, that hits. No. Uh, as uh, this guy. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, after being battered down numerous times, uh, is not able to hold his ground any further. And he succumbs to a mighty slash of the claws. Uh, let's see. That's all of them. Verandel appears riding her horse, uh, his horse. I don't know why I keep wanting to to change that. Um, sees the two of you uh, there, looks down, has drawn uh, a sword which gleams slightly as though glowing from moonlight. Uh, looks down at uh, you, Annie, and the, and the other. Are you hurt? What's going on? Those things are really hard to hit when you don't have anything that can hurt them. It's like hitting water. Water, you say? All right. Good tip. I have heard there seems to be a few more stragglers on, on the road. I don't know what... I can't see what everything else is happening. Well... You need to take care of yourself. So people are to lock their doors. Indeed, and I thank you for that warning. Now it seems I've got some work to do. Oh, maybe this will help to prepare you, or help to keep you safe. And he reaches onto his belt and pulls out a dagger. It also glows similarly to the sword, as if glowing from moonlight, and uh, tosses it at your feet. I'll want that back, but use it in good faith. Cool, cool. Uh, and uh, effectively, it is a magical dagger plus one. Cool. Awesome. It, it glows awesome, slightly awesome. as if with moonlight. Uh, and then Verendil uh, uh, kicks the heels on his horse and charges forward. Won't quite make it there because they were charging for a while first. But uh, the rest of you hear the clatter of hooves and a charging horse coming down. It seems as though, at least for the moment, reinforcements have arrived. Um, the woman beside you, Annie, kind of watches after Captain Verandell, and there's a sort of swoon, almost. <laughs> You're not exactly sure what she had seen. It's more like, we're going to be okay now. That's her turn. Or at least the people who know what they're doing are here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She agrees with you, kind of uh, not even really paying attention. Graveler. Graveler will punch three times as soon as I find his character sheet. It's punch, 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 drink. Yeah. Punch, drink, love. Wait. Poof. Oh, that's not good. Unfortunately, it's swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a hit. Hey. And a drink. That's a drink. Ooh. That's a lot of drinking. Big drink. Big drink. As it kind of again engorges itself on a on a bit of the water and then kind of turns and Spits it all out of the water, onto the ground. Satisfying, right? Medric? Swing at the water elemental. Hi yeah. That's a hit. Boom! Eight damage. And which weapon is this? Uh, the Warhammer. Okay. Do you still have the shield extended? No, I don't. It, it only lasts like one minute, right? And I used it oh, last oh, battle. Right. Yeah. And it had two charges, but like when she gave it to me, that used up one of the charges when I tried it out. So it's like, ah. <laughs> I didn't forget about it. <laughs> okay. And then the spiritual weapon will also swing for the fences. Woof. And not hit the fence at all. I think it just, it just <laughs> hit the fence. That's about it. Because they hit the fence right behind it. Whoop. 
It tried. All right. Let's see the guards. There's not a lot of them left. The guard that's right here. He's been doing just fine. He's going to continue to do just fine. Just fine. Sees his captain there. Acknowledges his captain there. Seems to lose track of where he is. Uh, the other one is going to disengage and retreat. Yeah. Uh, not have been the best direction to go in, but it is away from all the battle. Annie. Hello. Um, I am going to actually... Now that I have something that I can actually use to hurt this thing, um, I'm going to tell the, uh, the girl here um, and return to the, the spot here and have her hide in this little nook here. Uh, and we'll be right there. I, I missed where here was. Right here. Oh, okay. Right back where we were at the turn before. She nods with determination. We're going to get through this, okay? You stay here, stay quiet, and hide. Of course we will. Captain Verendel is here. <laughs> Fair enough. As well as 30, I will use my bonus action to move another 30 feet. Quite dramatically from the last time you saw this creature, it is now, while still a vortex of water, it does seem to have gaps in it. And it seems stretched a little thinner than it was. Cool. That's good. Uh, and... How many hit points am I at? 14? Uh, luxury. <laughs> luxury. What? What the hell? Uh, yeah, that's my my dash. I will hold an action with the dagger to stab anything that comes that comes my way. Okay. So as Verandil passes, you return the dagger with the pointy end out. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. I think this thing is annoyed enough by being surrounded that it's going to move. As it swooshes backward away from you, Medric, you do have an opportunity to strike at it as the water oh, elemental yeah. attempts to overwhelm the lesser earth elemental and this poor guard. That's a hit. A palpable hit. Sploosh. All right. As you uh, catch a little bit of it in the edge of your, your hammer on its way, retreating. But now, from a graveler, and I'll roll for the guard as well. Once again, a strength saving throw. Hey. Wow, graveler's good. Graveler doesn't fuck around anymore. He, he's seen that attack before. <laughs> Ah, oh, but the, the guard is caught up in it. So Graveler gets ejected at one side of this, this whirlwind. But the guard, this time, is caught. I almost rolled a d20 damage. That would have been really embarrassing. As it is, it's kind of a pain. All right, still standing. But now, caught up and whirling around, off of his feet, the guard is swearing in many, many terms that are actually quite familiar to Medric. Uh, they are uh, familiar uh, soldier swearing and being half work. There's a certain extra little spin on them. Something about the ancestors of this creature uh, having uh, lost their way and found themselves running out as urine. Something like that. Your ancestors are toilet water. That's why you're hanging out next to the public toilets, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Silas. Oh, sorry, the other guy. Uh, let's see. 
Um, yeah, it's just going to stalk towards this guy. Actually. Hmm. Yeah, no, it doesn't really understand what this is supposed to do, so it's just stalking after him. Uh, Silas, it is your turn. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to go over here anyways. Okay, stand by the guard. Um... And yeah, I'm gonna. Hmm. I'll club the uh, the sea devil. Okay. He prefers not to be clubbed. Tough. <laughs> oh, that's a definite clubbing. Holy crap! That's actually a drubbing more than a clubbing. And he kind of cringes a little bit from the from the hit coming from nowhere. He didn't really see it coming. All right. That's all I got. I'll use a bonus action to recharge the uh, staff empowerment, the shillelagh. Okay. Crackles with energy once more. Uh, the sea devil will return the drubbing. Uh, this time first with a bite as it leech, lurches forward. I don't think a 12 hits, though. Nope. And then one of Needs a 17. Hits. One of his claws, ah, it does connect, drawing its uh, claw across you. And kind of like the ones you fought underneath, not only is there the initial bite of the claw itself, but there's a follow-up of this sort of stinging black acid oozing across yep. it. I am still standing, okay. but just barely. Let's see this guy. Ooh, there you go. And this guy. All right, way to go. Gonna move to there. And the other guy is going to move to finding his way up and over. Darendel. The horse the horse clatters on forward, not stopping whatsoever, uh, seemingly to come straight at his companion, but then swerving at the very last minute, takes a strike with his uh, his. Uh, Moonblade. That is a definite hit. Oh, wow. <laughs> but manages only to nick the creature. That was really bad. <laughs> Damn. That was really, really bad. And you can see well, Verendel kind of uh, looking at his blade as almost as if let down uh, as it only catches the very barest wisp of the creature's edge. Um, she's taken care of for the moment. Graveler. Graveler will punch and scratch. Oh, yeah. Definite scratch as it's tearing away at some of its extra edges. Scratch it again. Oof. Nice. And again. Nice. It has whittled down to the barest, the barest strikes. However, it does not manage to drink any of it this time. It seems to have oh. learned that lesson and managed to gather all of itself in a vortex on the other side of its space. As it dodges. Medric, you're up. Warhammer. Swing. As soon as I find the right window. That's not good. Uh, no, that's not good at all. Uh, as you I swing. I would have moved next to it. You swing, and unfortunately, because it tried to avoid Graveler's uh, thirsty, uh, thirsty maw, it also managed to avoid your hammer. And but then the other hammer that's floating also hammer. hit it. 
that ah. does hit. Fuck. <laughs> like the Moonblade has a hard time finding any purchase. All right. The guard. He's swirling around inside this thing. This is not a position he prefers to be in. Trying to escape from it. Uh, it was a strength-based one. Oh. Uh... Meets Beats. Manages to uh, stab his sword. Yeah, his sword. Spear? Spear. Uh, over into the side of the uh, public outhouse. Using it for a, a, a lever. Shoves himself out of the water. Which is good. Because nice. he's going to really hurt otherwise. Um, this one. Fleeing away. Flee, flee, flee. Run away. She was Run away. And at this point, um, the tide is turning. You're starting to defeat these or these elementals, but it's taken so long, and already some guards and some civilians, some people, have perished from far off in the city. There is the loud peal of thunder. Just before it, the flash of bright light. Medric. You feel it in your heart, deep within. The fire that burns so strongly has burned since that moment you found Ignis. It ignites, it burns through you, and then feels cold. A loud horn side sounds afterwards, reverberating off the walls across the town. It's deep and low and long, followed by the cries of the sea devils responding to the signal. Medric, you feel cold. Like all the cold around you suddenly seems to seep into your bones. Annie, you see Medric's skin, which had been glowing, dim. Oh no. And that's where we're going to end for this week. the Temple of Ignis. What do I see towards the Temple of Ignis? You can't see anything from here. You're deep inside an alley, surrounded by buildings. Yeah. That's where we're going to end for this week. Damn it. We'll pick up after that particular moment next week. Uh, well, maybe not next week, actually. We are not away. entirely certain about exactly when we will be playing. Uh, I will change the end credits. You'll see them change live as I retype things. Uh, but uh, first of all, thank you to my players who have uh, put up with the technical problems today on uh, three different sides <laughs> uh, but uh, they, we managed to to work them out and get together i hope you've enjoyed Yo. this strange tale of legends of the drowned isles remember you can go to facebook.com slash lotdi to find us there you can also find us on youtube as you watch later or you can find us on twitch youtube.com slash encaf and the number one or on twitch.tv slash encaf1 uh, thanks as always for watching, and uh, we st I still don't have a sign off. Uh, what was it? We said we came up with something last time. I completely forgot. Try not to drown. Try not to drown. That seems even more appropriate right now. See you guys. Fair enough. See ya.